very good morning to you. Glad you could join us on AM Live on this Tuesday morning. My name is Olive Burrows. And as is our custom, on Tuesdays we host an all-female panel. And given that we are marking the 16 days of activism against sexual and gender-based violence, this morning we are discussing SGBV, women and politics. But again, as is our custom, we first take a look at the top stories. The national government is, says it is it has already disbursed 10 billion shillings as part of the equitable share to counties last week. An additional 10 billion shillings is expected to be sent this week as the government urges county governments to set aside portions of these allocations to mitigate the flooding crisis occasioned by the ongoing El Nino rains. NTV's Sydney Chazima reports on the resolutions of the emergency cabinet meeting that was held at State House yesterday. President William Ruto, in his move to put in plans to intervene in the flooding crisis brought about by the El Nino rains, held an emergency cabinet meeting at State House. From the meeting, several resolutions were passed, among them disbursement of a portion of the equitable share to the county governments. The National Treasury uh, last week disbursed 10 billion shillings of their shareable revenue. Cabinet also directed the National Treasury to release an additional 10 billion shillings to county governments this week, again part of their shareable revenue. Government is urging the devolved units to channel part of the disbursed equitable share towards combating effects of the El Nino rains. The government is encouraging the counties, as much as it's part of the shareable revenue, government is encouraging counties to try and reallocate some of these funds uh, to the dire situation now uh, occasioned by these floods. The National Treasury and other ministries have also been directed to reallocate funds in their budgets towards emergency responses. It also sanctioned a proposal to be sent to Parliament for the replenishment of the contingencies fund and the rationalization of the budget and a supplementary appropriations too of the current financial year. Cabinet also directed the National Treasury to further rationalize the current budget and, di uh, and direct ministries, departments and agencies, uh, that is MDAs, to commence reallocation of funds in their budgets to support the emergency response being undertaken by the state. The government has set its sights on scaling up the scope of humanitarian assistance to reach more than 50,000 households in the Asal counties, while also rolling out a distribution of 150,000 nets to the affected counties. Affected roads and bridges are also being repaired. The government has dispersed 500 million shillings to the new KCC to mop up excess milk during this rainy season. Uh, the government has also airlifted medical supplies worth 180 million shillings uh, through the KDF and in conjunction with the Wajir County government to Wajir County. Infrastructure restoration is being implemented following damage caused by rains. State House now says that the El Nino threat is still at an alarm stage and that the threat will only be escalated to a national disaster based on data from relevant agencies on the ground. Sydney Chazima, NTV at State House in Nairobi. Transport along the Garissa Nairobi Highway was disrupted after a section of the road was destroyed by flood waters. And this is as several villages in Kajado were marooned following heavy rains. Nur Abdulaziz reports on the flood situation. Heavy rains continue to ponder various parts of the country, living in their weak death and destruction. Hundreds of people were forced to leave their homes in Garissa after their houses were flooded. In Kajiado, several villages in Kajiado Central Sub County were marooned following heavy rains, leaving residents stranded. Residents of Torose and Lorongoswa villages could not access or live nearby Ilbisil town after a bridge was swept away. <laughs> In West Pokot, residents in highland areas of West Pokot are now living in fear over the risk of possible reoccurrence of mudslides following the heavy rains pounding the area. Lelan in Pokot South is a high altitude zone that is experiencing torrential rains with mist and fog affecting crops and livelihoods. The heavy rains have rendered roads impossible, paralyzing transport in the area. 
Some residents in areas prone to mudslides have started moving to safer grounds. In 2019, more than 20 people died and thousands were displaced in three villages of Muino, Nyarkolian and Parua following a mudslide. Tungiomba serikali pia waguje waongeze lightning arresters mingi katika hii area. Ndiyo isuye kwa sababu watu wengi kupitia hui mfuwa wamepotesa kwa mbezao, wengine wamepotesa watu. And in Meru, landslides have blocked the Kangeta Lari Highway near Lari Town in Igembe sub-county in central Meru County. The road was previously hit by landslides since the rain started. Landslides covered the road in Mwero village, Lare, in an incident that took place at 4 in the morning, which has left the locals in fear. Sasa tunawamba wanenchi watumio alternative routes, wale wanatoka kangeta, wale wanatoka Lare, wakati serikali inaendelea kufanya mpango ya kuondoa hii mchanga kwa barabara. Residents are calling on the government to speed up the reopening of the road. Nuru Abdul Aziz, NTV. The International Criminal Court has closed investigations into the Kenyan case on crimes against humanity following the 2007-2008 post-election violence. ICC Deputy Prosecutor Shamim Khan announced the decision to conclude the probe after assessing the facts and circumstances available to her office. But the prosecution team still maintains that two suspects, being Walter Barasa and Philip Kipkwech Bet, who remain at large, still have a case to answer before for the ICC. Kevin Mutai brings us the details. It has been 13 years since the International Criminal Court began investigations into the Kenyan case with charges of crimes against humanity preferred against the famous Ocampo 6 for the atrocities allegedly committed during the 2007-2008 post-election violence. But now the Office of the Prosecutor has concluded the investigation phase in Kenya according to a statement issued by the ICC's Deputy Prosecutor Shamim Khan Paswant to the Rome Statute. With regard to the day, 1st September, for the... In 2010, the trial chamber granted the prosecutor permission to open an inquiry in relation to the alleged crimes against humanity committed in the context of post-election violence witnessed in Kenya two years after the presidential polls. The investigations led to charges against six suspects, among them former head of state Uhuru Kenyatta, his successor President William Ruto, former head of civil service Francis Mudaura, politician Henry Kosgei, journalist Joshua Arpsang, and former police commissioner Hussein Ali. The charges included crimes against humanity, murder, rape, as well as persecution that left more than 1,000 people dead and thousands others displaced. All the charges against the six suspects were either not confirmed or withdrawn or even terminated without prejudice, according to the ICC prosecutor. Walter Barassa and Philip Kipkoech Bet have been charged with interfering with witnesses, but they remain at large. We submit that it would... The office of the prosecutor says the two still have a case to answer. The case against Paul Gesherum was also terminated after the trial chamber received official confirmation of his death in September 2022. The ICC prosecutor says her office will continue to engage with Kenyan authorities, civil society organizations and other relevant sources in prosecuting the two pending cases. For now, the fate of the suspects lies with the prosecutor, who will in her volition choose to charge the suspects afresh if and when new evidence will be available. Kevin Mutai, NTV. Azmir leader Raya Odinga says he will give the way forward on the National Dialogue Committee report on Thursday this week. Raila says he will meet the Azmir leadership, including the coalition's parliamentary group, before making the announcement. Okukusa reports. Raila was in Yamira and Kisumu counties to launch the party's membership recruitment drive, told his supporters to hold on until Thursday for a proper direction. <laughs> He described the Kenyan economy as a leaking pot, claiming that the Ruto administration lacks capacity to steer the country away from economic turmoil. Sasa jamaa hana ujuzi. Ea naambiwa kitu mzuri ya kufanya ni kongeza nini? Ushuru. 
Ushuru wa naongeza hapa kila siku. Na uzee lakini ile nyungu inavuja. That pot is leaking. Hata kumpati mrutu miaka miya moja. Na yu suri ya juu. Hata valeto mabadiliku. As new leader told President Ruto that it was high time. He stopped blaming his predecessor Uru Kenyatta for the problems with deviling the country and instead fix them. Sasa ulianza hiyo mwaka jana, mwezi wa tisa. Sisi tuku mwaka hii, mwezi wa kumina moja, bado wana laumu uru. Shiwa mashindwa. The opposition leader also condemned the government for what he described as its failure to conduct credible national examinations. The aim of Kubwa is to carry a route to kill a Mali and Baba Mashika equal in Aosa. For the Kila Mali in Aosa, Kila Mali Mashika in Aosa, in Anuka, to Kusababu Gani, Lana Yamunyezi Mungu. Politicians who accompanied the ODM leader in his Nyamira and Kisumu tour criticized the Kenya Kwanzaa administration, saying that it had failed to deliver on its promises. Oukokusa, NTV. All right, it's about that time when we get into the dailies. Let me just remind you what we are discussing this morning. We are commemorating 16 days of activism against SGBV, that is sexual and gender-based violence. And on Tuesdays, as I'm sure you know, I host an all-female panel. And this morning, we are discussing SGBV, women and politics. And uh, with me in a studio, I have a, f a couple of familiar faces and a new face, for me at least. <laughs> I'll start with the new face, uh, Irene Yambura, uh, who contested the Kiambu Senate seat. Uh, you said it ended up in the tribunal. You'll give us more details as we continue. But she describes herself as a political enthusiast. And somebody shared the poster with me and Sakul was political enthusiast. So maybe you can explain to them what that means. But she's also a... Uh, I had an interview that was posted on Olive, my namesake, Olive Gashara's uh, YouTube channel. And uh, you also describe yourself as a political science psychologist. Yes. I got it right? Yes, 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 Great. Yes, yes. So I'll give you a chance to explain what all of that means. Uh, we also have in a studio, Wanjiku Thiga. Uh, she contested the Theta Ward seat. Uh, I, I googled you a little bit this morning as well. <laughs> I saw uh, board member Fatma's voice. Yes, yes. Yeah, and actually interesting that both of you are sort of involved in the arts and how uh, the arts can be used to give voice, give women and youth mm -hmm. uh, voice. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I'm, I'm trying, uh, ju mm -mm. it starts with a J. Jitambwe. Yes, Jitambwe yes. Initiative. Yeah, yes. Jitambwe Initiative. All right, also this morning we have another lady called Gabriela Lorere, who is no stranger uh, to the set. She is. Uh, she contested the Laikipia North seat uh, in the last uh, <laughs> general election. I was also Googling you again this morning. I saw you have that image of you greeting President William Ruto. <laughs> Kablo Hame. <laughs> we have you happy. <laughs> Will you talk about your idea of so, oh yes, Upia. Yes, 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 yes. Upia, and you're the youth. Is it youth National or youth no? leader. National youth leader. Yes, mm -hmm. as well as Indigenous uh, CEO, uh, Indigenous Wellbeing Initiative for All. Yeah. Ah, yeah. Uh, we are awaiting a um, Sylvia Mulama who contested the Westland seat on an ANC ticket. Um, uh, yeah, so she is an advocate for women and youth and also joining us virtually shortly. Uh, and uh, well, the mistake was mine because I sent her the Zoom link a little bit late, but uh, she's been watching. Uh, and shortly we will see her on our oh. screens. That is Valentine Otieno. She contested the woman rep seat in Kisumu. She is a youth leader as well, uh, UDA. And uh, we'll be hearing from them on their experiences. Uh, Wanjiko, there was this. So as I was stalking Irene, I went on her Twitter, and then I found uh, she had retweeted, uh, I don't know if I'd call it a docu of sorts, that uh -huh. was done by the BBC. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, uh, yes. I, I, do you recall mm -hmm. retweeting that? Mm -hmm. um, yes, and, and the quote there was, uh, women who get into politics are prostitutes. So there are a lot of stereotypes, a lot of, there's a lot of misogyny. Yes, okay. yes, yes. Um, uh, w where women in politics are concerned. Uh, even in my Googling, I came across uh, the remarks that uh, William Kabogo made with uh, regard to Alice Nganga, 35-year-old mm -hmm. single lady, told her, go fast and get married. Yeah. Um, so we get into all of that in the course mm -hmm. of, uh, the, let me see, about one hour, 40 minutes uh, that's left uh, on AM Live. But first, let's take a look at what's in the newspapers. Okay. We start with the Daily Nation because Tukokwenye Yumba Ku. 
<laughs> Court suspends a new health plan. A judge yesterday granted orders halting the implementation of the Social Health Insurance Fund Act, the Primary Health Care Act, and the Digital Health Care Act, dealing a blow to President William Ruto's push to effect um, the new health plan that seeks to make it mandatory for every family to contribute a percentage of their income to the fund. The petitioner argues it is illegal to deny Kenyan services for failing to register for the fund. So this is a story that is developing and one that we are keeping an eye on. We have been joined uh, by Sylvia. Good morning. Glad you made it. Are we lucky? You know, last week it rained so heavily. I was worried last Tuesday morning. I was really worried. <laughs> but yeah, today uh, Fortune is with us. Um, also sharing the front page here, Ryla queries uh, KCP Integrity. As parents sue, over 200 parents from two private primary schools have moved to the High Court seeking a declaration of the premises of the Kenya National Examination Council as a crime scene as a petition for the temporary suspension of the Form 1 selection exercise. The controversy over the Kenya Certificate of Primary Education Examination results has also drawn condemnation from Azimio Lomoja leader Raila Odinga, Governors, MPs and a Teachers Union. Up for sale, state seeks to privatize 11 parastatals. We see here Mwea Rice Mills, Kenya Seed Company Limited, River Texas Africa, Kenya Pipeline Company, National Oil Corporation, Kenya Literature Bureau, Numerical Machining Complex, Kenyatta International Convention Center. So this has been published on uh, the Treasury website, so this uh, a privatization program for 2023. Mm, integrity up here. On the side, uh, let me just, uh, there we go. I think that will give you a better look. Doctor who refused to perform, quote, unnecessary tests awarded 16 million shillings. Dr. Jigar Patel was sacked for refusing to carry out unnecessary tests, admissions, and CT scans on patients to generate revenue for Max Cure Hospital Limited based in Kisumu. But the court has ordered the private hospital to pay the doctor for wrongful and unfair dismissal. Uh, ICC closes probe into Kenya's 2007 post-poll violence. And the International Criminal Court Deputy Prosecutor Nazat Shamim Khan said her office will not pursue additional cases into the alleged crimes and governors get 10 billion shillings for disaster response. The cabinet yesterday refused to declare the ongoing El Nino rains a national disaster, even as it rolled out measures to respond to the unfolding humanitarian crisis. 38 counties are now affected by the rains that have so far killed 76 people and displaced 35,000. Okay, let's take a look now at uh, huh, Taifa Leo. And they're asking a question. They're asking whether Raila Odinga at a Simbama na Raya. An image there when Zake and Dania Zimio kama vile Karua na Wamalwa wamepiga mapendekezo ya ripoti ya kamati ya maridhiano hali maswala tata kama vile garama ya juu ya maisha ya shugulikiwe kikamilifu. I'm curious uh, whether my panelists have had a chance to peruse. I know yes, over the from Saturday we've been sort of highlighting the big ticket items and I'll, I'll pull up um, the initial eight page statements that was released by the uh, committee but I'd like to get your initial thoughts um, on the national dialogue report did it meet your expectations um, were you you know just what your thoughts are I'll start with you Sylvia um, I think uh, for me it was uh, to be frank to be honest first of all the report came about because of um, you know Post election. Oh, I'm so sorry, Sylvia. They tell me um, that they're trying to sort out the sound. Oh, they haven't mic'd you yet. I do beg your pardon. I put you on the spot and didn't uh, <laughs> verify that you had your microphone. Shortly, we'll, we'll get your thoughts on that. Um, Wanjiku? Um, yes, actually, I love it. Can I play uh, a pun on your name? You know, uh, the, what does it have in it for Wanjiku? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Every time I'm always going for meetings and exactly. says, people say, so what does this have for Wanjiku? And I'm are you speaking about me and then I realize I'm speaking about Kenya in general. Yeah. So, um, first of all, I had an issue, first of all, even with the National Dialogue Committee itself. Uh -huh. It didn't represent um, the Kenyan community, first of all. So, you, you could see that people with disabilities were missing in the committee. You could see that um, young people were missing from the committee. So, I didn't have so much 
let me say trust and faith that they will address the concerns for Kenyans. But I'm happy to say that in some way they met some of the expectations I had, not fully. But um, I'm happy that they, have they recommended, you know, less travel, like, you know, ma making now um, budget cuts. And, and we've seen those budget cuts across ministries. The ministries up to 300 million is, is taken. But, uh, but that's okay, at least it was before the report came out. But at least we can see the goodwill that was, uh, that was coming in. Um, they spoke about the cost of living, but not what I expected, maybe. That wasn't met. But above all, the other agenda role was most key for me. Mm -hmm. And no, I don't agree with them. Uh -huh. Yes, I think the multi-sector working group is doing a better job uh -huh. when it's recommending the tooth agenda bit. Yes. So my understanding was that they've left it to the to the group to handle, but and they did make recommendations yes. based on the submissions they received. Yes. And and I'll pull that up uh, shortly. But uh, on cost of living, what you're saying they didn't meet your expectations. What were you looking to hear or waiting to hear? You know, more actionable results. You know, like. For that, that doesn't need matter actually more explanation. Kitwenye monancha kiskia, it makes direct translation to their pocket. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I felt that what the recommendations they made were more. You were underwhelmed. Yeah, yeah, okay. and they took time with this committee. Nashindwa lukwa na debate ni ukondani, but it's because we didn't have young people in that in that committee. You can't speak about uh, issues that affect the nation. And 75, almost 75 percent of the population is about young people, so you know, uh, understand us when we say we don't feel represented. Uh -huh. Okay, mm. um, Irene, your thoughts, your initial thoughts. I know it's a 296-page document, <laughs> but uh, based on what you've seen, had uh, what are your initial thoughts? I think I'm happy by the fact that you're having, we are conversing as a nation. First things first. I think I'm happy by the fact that we've taken that truth. Because, I mean, um, failure to that, I don't know where we would have been as a nation. Um, do I feel like we are properly represented, especially as young women? Not at all. You know, I, I, f I feel there's still a lot of room that has been left for us to, I mean, to ponder on as a nation. Um, the cost of living, I mean, it's, uh, as Wanjiko has said, yes, it's underwhelming. But I think it's a, it's, it's a problem that is facing the world as a, as a whole. Mm -hmm. So I think it's, well, I'm, in a nutshell, I'm happy we're having the conversation. Uh -huh. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, you view it as a step forward and uh, a I'm work hopeful. in progress. I'm hopeful. hopeful. I want to be hopeful. I want to be those Kenyans that are a little bit hopeful uh -huh. that good things are yet to come, uh -huh. even when things are very difficult for us as a nation. Uh -huh. I, I don't know. I was not expecting much from it. To begin with? Yes. Okay. So, okay. yeah, that's why I'm... All cool. right. Yeah. Uh, Gabriela, what was the need for Gabriela Lorere? <laughs> mm, you know, I was part of the governance committee that presented to Ghana issues to the NATCO. And I'm happy they adopted the school feeding program and boarding. Boarding, school feeding, a school and a school feeding and boarding program. Yeah, they adopted that, but on matter uh, cost of living, they didn't come out clear. Yeah. On matters cost of living. Mm. All right, Sylvia, we've come back around. <laughs> I hope we can now. Can we hear her okay now? Okay, so your initial thoughts. Yeah, my, I mean, uh, for me, I think uh, it, it satisfied uh, the opposition. Because it was initially, I mean, it initially came about due to the uh, post-election um, uh, fracas. And so it created precedence for discussions of other issues, which the inclusivity of it, part of it was good for the nation, and some of it was not included. Uh, for me, the good that came out of it was the recognition of the opposition as an official office. And hopefully this will, um, forward going, this will help the country in healing, but at the same time, uh, in future elections, we'll have precise decisions and, you know, uh, conceding by the opposition. And also uh, the reformation of IEBC. Um, I want to believe that 
it was from both parties and of course there was um, public participation. So going forward, we should not have issues after the elections. Supreme Court should be the final after the elections. So I think that was the good out of it. Uh, but in general, um, I think what they were looking for, I'm not quite sure because it, was, it did not really come out what the opposition was looking for. Mm -hmm. And they, had, they were hinging on, uh, you know, cost of living, which they did not discuss in intense. And then out of the report, they come and say, well, we are not agreeing about the cost of living. But it's normal uh, in the uh, present circumstances that the world is reeling right now in recession. And therefore, each and every country right now is suffering. And most countries have had to make adjustments. Those who, are, who have social system, they are able to fund and subsidize their uh, citizens. But Kenya, we have to rise and get to a level where we are able to also sus uh, subsidize our citizens by providing um, social support. Okay. Yeah. So I'm just uh, working on uh, pulling that up, uh, the report, because I'd like us to also look mm -hmm. at the recommendations, as I mentioned, on the two-thirds. Yes. Um, yeah. And then, because uh, it, it still informs part of our discussion, right, representation. Mm -hmm. um, huh. Sending it to myself. Okay, I'll have it sh up shortly. But first, let's take a look at what uh, Business Daily has this morning. 200 billion assets rich per state holds put on sale. 11 entities to be privatized in IMF-backed divesture plan. Kenya Pipeline. Did I pronounce that right? Divesture. Okay. Kenya Pipeline, KICC, among the most lucrative. This report by Constant Munda. President William Ruto's administration is proposing to sell 11 parastatals with an asset value of more than 200 billion shillings as part of the International Monetary Fund-backed reforms aimed at restructuring public entities and lessening reliance on taxpayers. Treasury Cabinet Secretary Njuguna Nungo has, in a new privatization program under the newly enforced law, disclosed plans to offload government shares in 11 state-owned enterprises. Uh, for sale sign uh, on the, the graphical representation on the front page there. Top banks set aside 62 billion shillings, anticipate record defaults. This one uh, by uh, Dominique Omondi. Eight tier one banks, including Equity, KCB and Stanbic, have increased their loan loss provisions by 45.8% to 62.5 billion shillings in the third quarter of this year in anticipation of massive defaults due to a tough operating environment. I also see on the ticker here we have uh, former EAPCC workers allowed uh, seize 1.3 billion shillings. East African Portland Cement Company has suffered a blow after the Court of Appeal fell to fell fell. Why does that not sound quite right? <laughs> mm, it says fell, right? Fa I suppose failed to lift an order. Yeah, obtained by former workers attaching its bank accounts over debt of 1.3 billion shillings. Two EPZ firms to fire 7,850 employees. The Ministry of Labor has summoned the management of two EPZ factories in Mombasa over the impending layoff of 7,850 um, next month. And uh, online forex brokers hit with new tax. The Treasury has introduced a regulatory fee on online forex brokers, opening an extra revenue stream for Capital Markets Authority. I just want to see this one for EPZ. Um, uh, page eight of the business dailies of the business daily. I beg your pardon. Let's see. Uh, I'm just trying to get to the bottom of why. So, um, Ashton Apparel and Mombasa Apparel which is said to be owned by a single investor, issued a redundancy notice on September the 28th, 2023. After a transfer agreement, asset transfer agreement was reached between them and Go Caldas Exports Limited. Oh, okay. So it's an acquisition there. Okay, let's take a look now at uh, the standard. And this is what the front page looks like. We're looking at redundancy and now we're looking at mass sackings. Um, loom as nhif changes begin health cabinet secretary susanna komicha has told health fund workers that jobs are not guaranteed in the new scheme in two months those to leave will receive their letters quote 
a quote here. Give me a structure that will help me to answer many questions regarding whether jobs are guaranteed or not. And uh, let us see what Ruto Raila proposals on law mean to hustlers. Some of the proposals, less travel by government officials. So the same question I was asking, Wanjiko. An increase in top executive offices, reduction in fuel prices, collapse of government institutions. Huh? Remind me, what would this be in regards to? Collapse of government institutions. I'll, I'll, I'll flip over and see oh, okay. what they mean by that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's what is happening. Privatization. Yeah. Yeah. Was it contained in the... You know, I didn't read. I, I read as much as I could. <laughs> 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 the... Uh, for, uh, I know it's too early to use that word, but uh, the... The, the what, what okay. intriguing yeah, portion to me about, uh, increase of allocation to the counties, an audit of last year's presidential elections. Whereas the report by the dialogue team has been received with heavy undertones, a peek inside shows elaborate plans to trim government spending and enhance funding to counties for development. Collapse of government is or the to address the collapse of government institutions yes. or something, I suppose. All right. Um, uh, also on the front page of the standard at the very top here, parents in court want from one selection halted, cabinet sets aside 7 billion shillings for floods, UAE planned to use COP28 on oil deals. And for the star, <laughs> doesn't this picture of uh, Natembea look like he's saying Mambo ni Matat? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. Uh, I see here Ryla calls crisis meet as as mere split over report. Individual MPs from Odinga's camp have termed it underwhelming. So they share mm. the sentiments of some of you here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Especially given the reason we were given for Pill being called out onto the streets was that yeah. we need cost to have the cost of living yeah. Yeah. Just addressed. Mm. Uh, let's see. Uh, Ruto's cabinet unveils plan to deal with raging floods. Uh, Kenyan man stuck in Mexico, Mexican hospital after severe burns. Mm. Kenya pipeline and KCC among 11 state firms lined up for sale. Um, let's see finally the people daily. And uh, this is the front page. Floods, state pledges cash. Governor's protest payoff. Uh, cabinet allocates billions for emergency response against heavy rains as death toll climbs. Move comes after county bosses accused government of failing to disburse funds. And so they have some figures on the front page here. 180 million shillings value of medical supplies that the government will airlift to Wajir County with assistance of KDF. 10 billion shillings amount that will be allocated to county governments to deal with floods after governors protested. 7 billion shillings amount in emergency funds that county government that government has allocated to deal with El Nino. 76 people who have lost their lives as a result of floods, over 500,000 others are threatened with displacement. That 5,000 households have been displaced by the heavy rains that continue to pound various parts of the country. 150,000 mosquito nets will be distributed to counties prone to malaria in a campaign to fight new infections. Uh, at the very top here, ICC prosecutor finally terminates. Ruto's case on the side here, Ryla to lead protests if talks falter, mm -hmm. and uh, parents sue over KCPE. So big stories, um, reactions on uh, the KCPE results, uh, how the flood mitigation measures that have been uh, announced by the state. Should we begin with floods? Oh yes, and we have been joined by Valentine Otieno, who is joining us from Kisumu County. Uh, good to see you, Valentine. Thank you for being patient with us. So I'm looking at the clock. Why don't we take a break and then now we come back substantively and, and take a mm -hmm. look at some of this content, right? The floods, okay. uh, the reactions to KCPE. And I am forgetting one thing. I don't know that you guys have a view on the privatization schedule. Uh, I'll pull it up as well. Uh, we'll get into all that before we actually get into the topic of conversation, which is commemorating 16 days of activism against sexual and gender-based yes. violence. So SGBV, women and politics on the other side of this break.
naamini we upo ya drive ifagie na kanyumba kangu niende benki ni hesabu na vipesa vyangu nita drive ifagie na kanyumba to get Nita Drive by Zabron Singers, dial star 811 star 849 hash. Skiza, Nan Nation. Africa, as we all know, is a resource rich continent that has been and will continue to be a source of wealth to the rest of the world. We are also very diverse as a people. Our history is laden with examples of greatness, and we can make this continent a world all its own. But almost all the roads of our post-colonial trade narratives have been designed to lead to capitals that aren't on the continent. So the question is, how do we reverse these roads? Can we talk like civilized people? If you don't believe me, there's nothing to discuss! To start with, Bridget, leave that suitcase alone! Don't tell me the investigator you hired to find my aunt Serena's daughter is... Named Rotundo? Yes. Yes, yes, he's Alejandro Rotundo. He is the same person the day you hired. This check will pay for your silence. Don't you want us to check what I've just told you with a DNA sample? The only thing I want is for you to disappear. Head over heels. The Motindum Liquid Electronic Device, which is every corner giving your loved ones a peaceful sleep. Together, we can fight to end malaria. Motindum, Kenya's number one choice. Reach your audience instantly and make a lasting impression with Nation Sema. Affordable SMS at 0.3 Kenya shillings. Own sender ID for 10,000 Kenya shillings plus 10,000 free SMS. To sign up, please call 0790-111-111 or email us on nationsema at ke.nationmedia.com. The Sport Essence is a light serum, quickly absorbed to clear dark marks. Rich moisturizing cream is a gel cream type that deeply hydrates and prevents dark marks. I highly recommend Melano CC for healthy and happy skin. Roto! All right, welcome back to AM Live. And this morning, uh, we are discussing uh, SGBV, Women and Politics. With me in studio, we have Sylvia Mulama, uh, Wajiko Thiga, Irene Yambura, Gabriela Lorere. And joining us virtually, we have uh, Valentine Otiero. But Valentine, before I invite uh, my, the, uh, I mean the panel, who you included, to weigh in on how we've been managing the flood situation and whether the pronouncements that came out of State House yesterday following that emergency cabinet meeting have allayed any concerns you may have had you might have had with regard to the flood situation uh, the flooding we've been witnessing right El Nino situation uh, but first uh, Valentine your initial thoughts on the National Dialogue uh, Committee report uh, you know everybody's <laughs> it seems from the headlines uh, is waiting with bated breath to hear what Raila Odinga's <laughs> pronouncement uh, will be on the report he says uh, they will sit they will meet uh, they will talk, including with pal his parliamentary group and, and those in the Azmio coalition already. We've had some reactions. Martha Karua uh, said, if you're not addressing the cost of living, you have done zero work. Uh, <laughs> essentially, that, th that is my paraphrasing, <laughs> my understanding. Uh, and we saw Eugene Omalwa say, you know, I didn't sign, I didn't append my signature to that report because, again, the issue of the cost of living, I feel, was not uh, addressed to his satisfaction. But... Uh, do you agree with them, Valentine? Thank you very much, Olive. I'm sorry I was having some uh, camera issues. Well, about the National Dialogue report, uh, I think that uh, Raila Odinga is not going to have any problem with it, especially considering the fact that um, 
several issues that they brought to the table have been considered and recommendations have been made. Uh, for example, we have the issue of the office of the opposition. And I think that uh, this is a win to us because, you know, we deserve to have, um, as a country, an opposition team that is, you know, checking on the government and ensuring that the government is doing the right things. So that is a win. So I think that should be a win for him. And we also have uh, the reforms, the reformation of IBC. And, uh, you know, the Kenya Kwanza team, the, due to the bipartisan talks, have actually agreed that um, they are going to allow the servers to be opened. So this is something that the Azimio team have been wanting for a long time. And now that it has been addressed, I believe the servers will be opened and they will be fine. I also like... Um, there are some reactions. There are some reactions from studio. My understanding is that there would be an audit of uh, the 2022 electoral process uh i, I have but as i said i haven't read the entire 296 pages was there mention of servers being opened ladies oh, did you come across yeah, that yeah. valentine yeah, do you mean ultimate. servers opened figuratively <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, uh, I, I don't know how they are going to do it, but basically what they said is that they would audit the election. So that means that they are going to add some confidence and uh, assurity and, uh, to, the, to their Zimio team. So, you know, opening of servers is a term that has been used to sometimes meet the audit of the elections. Okay. And uh, apart from that, we have the two-third gender rule. Uh, that they talked about and they recommended a few things about it. And I think this is a big, big, big win, especially for women, because in that report, I saw that uh, some teams uh, reported that uh, to achieve the two-third gender principle, we need at least 54 women to be added to parliament. And so if we have 54 women being added to parliament, can you imagine that that is such a big win? And it will mean that uh, a lot of women are going to be represented and uh, that, uh, you know, finally, we are going to achieve the two-third gender rule that has been for a long time. You know, it's been passed as a bill. It's in the law. It's just not been implemented. So I like the fact that the multisectoral working group is working on it. And uh, very soon, we are going to have a number of women. And I want to see a lot of young people being represented in this case. So for me, the National Dialogue Report... Um, is beneficial to the country because it's bringing both teams together and uh, you know we they, they wouldn't agree on everything because negotiation is a give and take i am giving you this one are you willing to take it and i know that uh, over the 90 days that they took just talking about the report it's going to be successful and i believe that prime minister former prime minister Relamolo Dinga is going to agree with it and the president had already affirmed his support for this report Right. So you are confident that uh, Raila Odinga will <laughs> will come on board. Uh, I'm, I'm scrolling up to the two thirds. It was like eight. The section was eight hundred eight point something or eight something. Uh, but even as I, I scroll uh, towards that, because we'll come back full circle um, to this. Should I look at the highlights that were contained in the summary, and then we look at the before we look at uh, the two thirds? I am at fifty something. <laughs> Eight? Eight, 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 eight. Um, let's see, let's see. So have, have I skipped it? Is it before boundary delimitation? Let's see. It's 88? 88 or 147. 88, 88. Cannot be too far here. Uh, okay, I, I will trace it because I was trying to search, <laughs> but my keyboard is not coming. You know, mm. it's it just easy to go yeah. through that. Mm -hmm. yes. All right, uh, but uh, here's a summary of the report. Let's just take a look at uh, the recommendations that were highlighted, and then we'll uh, I'll figure out how to get to the two thirds. Um, huh. Okay, here we go. Number one, the first thing had to do with electoral justice and related matters. Mm -hmm. An audit of the 2022 electoral process, NADCO has recommended the evaluation of the 2022 electoral process, restructuring and reconstitution of the IBC. NADCO has recommended establishment and expanded selection panel from the current seven member to a nine member selection panel. Time for resolution of presidential election petitions, NADCO recommends the increase in timelines 
within which the Supreme Court shall hear and determine a petition challenging the validity of a presidential election from 14 to 21 days. Electoral legal reform, NADCO has recommended that legal reforms passed less than uh, 18 months to the general election become effective in the next electoral cycle, cost of living. NADCO recommends that all arms of government shall reduce their travel budgets by 50% and that the Salaries and Remuneration uh, Commission review daily subs subsistence mm -hmm. allowances for state and public officers with a view to reducing by 30%. That co recommends the Ministry of Energy and Petroleum in liaison with the National Treasury to reduce the road maintenance levy and the anti-adulteration levy by five anti and three shillings per litre respectively. NADCO recommends the, that the national government finalize the transfer of all devolved functions and provides for the concomitant resources to the county governments. NADCO recommends that parliament shall amend the constitution to provide for the equitable share to the county governments, not to be less than 20% of all revenue collected by the national government from the current 15%. However, the committee was unable to reach a consensus on a number of other proposals on the matter of cost of living, including the reduction of VAT on fuel from 16 to 8% and scrapping of the housing levy, the twin issues in the Finance Act, entrenching of funds into the constitution, NADCO recommends the entrenchment of NGCDF, National <coughs> Government Affirmative Action Fund, and the Senate Oversight Fund, and they recommend the War Development Fund be established by a statute. Establishment and entrenchment of state, state offices, establishment of the office of the leader of official opposition, uh, the leader of the, who is the leader of the largest party coalition of political parties that garnered the second greatest number of votes in the immediately preceding presidential elections with two deputies. Establishment of the office of prime minister to be nominated and upon approval of the National Assembly appointed by the president. Uh, fidelity to the law on multi-party democracy. Uh, they recommend the establishment of the Independent Political Parties Regulatory Commission as an independent body that shall be responsible for the registration of political parties and their office holders and the management of political parties' funds. And uh, yeah, I think that was pretty much it i will trace two thirds and the recommendations therein uh, shortly but uh, speaking of county governments and uh, resources uh, resource allocation mm -hmm. um has i'll start with you sylvia yes the press briefing that was given yesterday by the state house spokesman uh, 10 billion uh, equitable share to good counties to help them address the flood situation yes. uh, restored some confidence perhaps in how we are managing the flood situation um I'm not too sure if it did. Uh, I, you know, the situation is that the flood situation was uh, flagged by the uh, meteorological department, and then they flip flopped on that. And one minute they advised the president that it was not going to happen, and so we put ourselves in a situation where you question uh, the the government and its institutions, like you know the meteorological department. Are they really, do they really have the equipment to do their job? And what is making them incompetent? Because what they are giving us is a focus of every week. They have not given us a focus of what it would look like. Uh, you know, there are countries that can give you a focus of up to, you know, um, June of next year because they have the right equipment. So I think it's an institution that needs to be reviewed. Perhaps they need more resources. Perhaps they need uh, more uh, competent, um, uh, you know, experts to give... Um, uh, you know, good um, to give proper feedback to the nation. However, um, it started raining and all of us Kenyans have known that it has been raining. And I think it was a flip-flop, uh, you know, um, for there not to be a clear communication from the government to the people of Kenya that this is where we are, this is our situation, and this is what we're going to do. Um, like, remember, uh, the deputy president said that they had already dispersed the funds to the county governments. And then the county governments came up and said, no, the funds had not been dispersed. So it's that kind of inconsistency that needs to be avoided so that Kenyans can be rest assured that they're actually uh, getting the right services, they're getting the right information. Um, at the same time, um, it has been dispersed, but we have seen already about 90 lives have already been lost. And personally, I feel that perhaps it could have been prevented. Um, we could have done a little bit more before, particularly for the uh, northern part of Kenya. We had 
food rotting on the roads, uh, people not receiving the food at aid in time. Um, that was a bit a letdown to us as a nation. Mm -hmm. yeah. Want you call? I think um, there's, there's one bit where the government uh, uh, disburses money, and then there's a bit where if the money is going to do the job. Because uh, there are so many roads or holes, let me call holes of corruption, that uh, people don't get to, this money doesn't get to serve the people. And there's also the other thing where will people be able to hold their county governments responsible or accountable to it? Because also imagine you're going through these floods, you've lost lives, you've lost your livestock, maybe um, your household items. And then you're starting to think on how you're going to hold accountable a governor. It's a, it's a little bit more. So I am just calling to governors to really, you know, be empathetic and really let this money get to go and, and serve people. You see, and I think as a country, I don't know why we don't do better. We are always going through these natural disasters and it's like we never learn from them. We never mitigate for them. We never plan for them. It's like, okay, yes, you are talking about there'll be El Nino and everything. Then you hear Sakaja saying he's getting speedboats. Like, is that even you really... You say he's getting speedboats. Yeah. yeah. That one, Ilipita, you and Ilipita. You're so scared. Alisema, Alisema. So, Nashindu, is that really... Is that contextual to our country, to our to our county even? Okay, I don't belong to Nairobi. I don't belong to Nairobi. I'm holding my governor accountable. But... Is that contextual, contextual to Nairobi residents? So we have to also mitigate, but in a contextual manner, so that they, we can be able to really, um, the money gets to serve people rightly, correctly. Kiona, the other day I saw KCP, it was KCSC results or papers, people, the, 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 the van that was transporting the papers, it got swept away by waters. So I was thinking to myself, are these kids going to redo the, the exam? what will happen because you see now it's it's not only affecting livelihoods now it's even crossing into education sector so we really have to even have um, a plan that cuts across dif different um, ministries yeah it's not just a standalone they have to not work as a silo to work across ministries okay yeah. uh, Irene your thoughts on how we are managing the flooding as a result of El Nino I think it's very Kenyan of us to act very late you know it's very kenyan that we wait for disaster to happen then we start moving forward um, but all in all um, my heart goes out to all the victims that somehow their livelihoods have been affected by this El Nino. and i really hope that our government we should do better we, ex we expect our government to represent represent us better yeah all right your thoughts gabriella for me i think the national government and county government are totally doing nothing on matter flood. Really? Because it's the, yesterday... That's a heavy statement. Yeah, the president spoke yesterday. Did he speak two weeks ago? No. Uh, and you find out it, there is a confusion between county government and national government. The national government, through deputy president, he said he has already dispatched money to county government. Then governor came out and said, no. Alafu kiesha yake akasema, iyo pesa mkonae kwa county government, you use it. You see, there is a confusion between county government and national government. Allow me to say, um, I'm from Samburu County, and Samburu County is affected with, uh, with flood in a ward called Wato Ward, in Lerata, Lerata Village, Wato Ward. And a uh, few weeks ago, even you people, I had uh, uh, lorries carrying people, then helicopter came and rescued some people. It's unfortunate that Samburu County is the most affected, but they are not part here, 38 counties affected by flood. Samburu County is not among the, the 38 counties. But we are the most affected, Baka, the Barabara in Maribika Yote. You see, I think national government, they are not aware of what's going on for ground. And they are just politicking around flood. There's nothing they are doing. I'm from Molto Itiolo County. I can speak on behalf of Itiolo, Turkana, Samburu. Itiolo, there is nothing. It's only NGOs who are doing something. But 
county government, national government, totally nothing. No one is speaking about them. Even in Tamburu County, even in Martabit County, the only place you see people speaking is Mandera County through their governor and Wajir County. But Northern Kenya county government, governor and national government, totally they are saying nothing. The only thing they depend on is on NGOs to, offer, to mitigate those floods. Okay. Yeah. Um, Valentine, what I'm hearing from Gabriela is she's saying her, she has no interest in politicking around the flood situation. Um, you know, I wouldn't call it politicking. It's not politicking. Our president is the president and um, I think he's just trying to find ways to um, help with the challenges. Uh, if we look at the news, we are seeing that at least 38 out of 47 counties are affected. And it is very sad um, that um, so many counties are affected, so many families are displaced, livestock are lost, lives are lost. And this is such a sad time for the country. And I think that is why um, they had that emergency cabinet meeting. And I think from that meeting, they, come out with, uh, they came out with the solutions. And uh, one of those solutions was, you know, implementing various humanitarian response, uh, like uh, supply of food, non-food items, uh, medical products, and, you know, also helping the displaced to get settled. You know, like here in Kisumu County, uh, in Kano, it really floods. And uh, last year we went uh, visiting somewhere in Kano and we found several families just living in a school. And that meant that schools had to be closed so that these families could live in those classrooms because they had been displaced by these floods and i think that is why um, the government is developing a quick response uh, towards uh, trying to mitigate this uh, you know the flood challenge that we are having uh, we've also seen uh, the cabinet proposed to replenish contingencies and uh, fund and rationalize the 2023-2024 budget if it is considered in the budget then for sure we know that we have money that will help us uh, when the next time that El Nino comes, we can uh, survive. We also know that um, the government um, suggested that the National Disaster Operation Centers coordinate relief activities. So I think going forward, we are going to see uh, several leaders uh, visiting uh, several places that have been affected by floods. You know, floods is a natural uh, disaster, and uh, we can only do things um, that can help to mitigate them. Things like building dikes and, uh, you know, such solution that can help avoid the floods. Like, for example, here in Kisumu, there is a river that if it can be fixed so that it doesn't outbank, then we will have uh, the problem of floods uh, mitigated. So I think we are in such a bad state right now, but I'm happy that uh, the cabinet had a meeting yesterday and they allocated seven billion towards ensuring that families are helped and uh, people who are affected by the floods are also helped. Okay, suppose uh, the thoughts of uh, that I've heard this morning are like, did they act quick enough? given the, the forewarning. All right, so I'll have to put a pin uh, on KCP and uh, privatization to allow us now get into what brought us here uh, this morning, SGBV. We are marking 16 days of activism against sexual and gender-based violence. And um, uh, yes, yes, women and politics, how it impacts on women and politics. Um, and speaking of women and politics, the two-thirds thing, I found it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, the committee recommends a the multi-sectoral working group on the realization of the two-thirds gender principle under the ministry of public service gender and affirmative action to finalize its work and recommend a framework of implementation of two-thirds gender principle and submit its report to parliament for consideration uh, the working group considers the following two proposals as they engage with stakeholders on the matter. Option one, adopt the principle under Article 177 as follows. On the basis, A, on the basis of proportional representation by use of party lists as provided for under Article 90. Uh, B, compromise, comprise, I beg your pardon, comprise candidates who stood for election with precedence being given to candidates who received the greatest number of votes. Mm -hmm. Comprise candidates who stood for elections mm. with precedence uh, being given to candidates who received the greatest number of votes. Option two, double the number of women seats from the counties to the National Assembly from 47 to 94, mm -hmm. while retaining the 290 elected from the constituencies and the 12 
uh, nominate from the party list, use the top-up list to address any shortage that the number of women in the National Assembly may arise uh, by application of the formula. So this is what is recommended in this National Dialogue uh, Committee report with regards uh, to two thirds. Of course, it's uh, an agenda item of the that the president including in, included in his memo to parliament, do you remember? Yes. Where he talked about the creation mm. of the office of the leader of opposition, entrenchment of the funds, and, and mm. uh, the two-thirds as well. Okay, now to 16 days of activism against uh, sexual and gender-based violence. We are taking a look at it uh, this morning for, from the lens of women in politics. Mm. Um, I'll start with you, Sylvia. Uh, tell us a little, do you feel that your gender worked against you when you were campaigning? Uh, for the Westlands parliamentary seat. Uh, before you came in, I gave people your credentials. I said, she didn't own an ANC ticket. Uh, do you think your gender worked against you? Um, in terms of the competitors, yes. But uh, the electorate, I think they are quite receptive so far. I think uh, uh, the, 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 the country is rising to the occasion that actually they can have women leadership. However, we still have the cultural issues which uh, stems in many communities and uh, one of the communities is actually the, the Luya community. They would say you know, things like, well, I cannot have a woman lead me, you know. Um, so we have those issues still ingrained in the electorate. However, um, my experience was that if you run an issue-based uh, uh, um, campaign uh, that you're giving the people a clear agenda of what needs to be done, they give you an ear and they listen. But the opposite side is that some, the, the, the male counterparts will now come with the rhetoric, you know, speak of superfluous things that don't exist, offer them the world. And to be honest, I think where we are right now, from my experience, is that we still have this flagship of looking at what does this person have for me to vote for them? Mm. Kenyans, to be frankly honest, are not voting for ideas. They are voting for money. Mm. And it is a big mistake because most of them end up suffering for the next five years because they voted for money. When the person comes mm. and, you know, uh, uh, showcases what they have and is able to give them a lot of money, they are definitely going to vote for that person. But when a person comes and gives them ideas of what can be achieved from the leadership, they look at it, they're like, well, I think it's better I eat my 200 now mm. and vote for the other and, and vote for her later. So mm. it, it's both sides that the cultural issues are there, then the financial issues are there, but then there's the aggression of, you know, other communities, but in the same, in the sense of Westlands, there was no aggression towards uh, female leadership. I think I had a fantastic campaign. I had um, a good reception on the ground. And I, I felt very, very secure. I didn't have a moment where I felt like somebody was coming for my neck. Yeah. Okay. Mm. That's good. Yeah. It's a good thing to hear. Yeah. Uh, Wajiku, what was your experience? Uh, what role, <laughs> if any, did your agenda play in your campaigns? So for me, it, it, it both worked for me and worked against me. Um, as a young woman, I, I don't know, I don't have, I'm not married, I don't have a baby. Oh, no. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> my dad passed on, so I really didn't have a male figure to speak on my behalf. That meant because the Council of Elders are among the people who endorse your campaign and it really gives you mileage. So I couldn't speak on my behalf, you know, as a young woman, I, you can't meet the Council of Elders. It's a man who gets to speak on your behalf. So I'm unmarried. I don't, and my dad passed on, so I got to miss a large section of voters because of that. But, like Sylvia, I, you know, people are waking up to the power of women and they're embracing it. I cannot complain that my, my community didn't embrace me, it did. But did they vote young women in? No. no. Because today in parliament, you only have 6% of young people, of young women in parliament. So, yes, they will give you their ear. In fact, your name is going to grow really mm. big. They'll speak about you positively mm. and speak about how capable you are of leadership. But when it comes to the day of voting, it's, it's another thing, you know? 
it doesn't translate to votes uh, because you have to win. You, you know, in politics, number one, John, it matters <laughs> who's just number one. The rest, mm. uh, it's a uh, done deal. But um, I would say that it also translates to a lot of, especially when you speak about STBV, um, a lot of people, especially men, feel you know, body autonomy is non-existent in this space. So they feel like your body is accessible to them. Mm -hmm. So when you're campaigning, you know, they're busy touching your hash. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like this, you know, like, you don't need to touch me. Like, you can just tap me and, and I'll, you, you'll get my, my ear because maybe you're speaking to someone else and someone else wants your attention. And, and I, I remember I, I was forcibly kissed twice in my campaign. And, and you know wow. people you know and it's in public and you know the reaction of people is that they laugh at it mm. and and for you it, it, it's such violation to your body you know and, and when you go to sleep you remember over oh, the house kissed by this guy you know you don't even remember his face mm. correctly yeah. for you and, and you know they feel like you shouldn't get angry and i think at that moment as well i'm like i can't be angry i want votes so I don't react with anger. Mm -hmm. I'm like, yo, I'm not just, oh, I'll fight for you. you know, that's what you mm -hmm. say. But you would want to maybe slap the guy, <laughs> you know? And when I realized, um, but um, the SDBV escalated physically because it also came from online spaces. You know, we say that mm -hmm. there was no physical violence in Kenya, but there was, it just transcended online. So I was heavy sexualized online and I think this perception went to ground because they are reading comments so they feel like okay then this is a sexual being you know so they can sexualize you in how they feel felt so i had to increase my security and this means increasing the cost of campaigns mm -hmm. so you find that women cost of campaigns become becomes double because now you're increasing security you see if a man is working with two security some men even campaign dot security but you now have to increase to three or four just for your sake and sometimes not because you're it's going to be physical violence but for women mostly is sexual uh, violence and you don't want to upset people because ah we are nakasirika sana you know <laughs> so people don't vote for you so it was a tricky situation to be at and i've realized that during campaign trails your body is not yours people it's mm -hmm. accessible to people and if you put more security people say hey nakipata kiti si hata atutaimfikia kabisa so it's so tricky you you're stuck in a hard place and a rock yeah mm -hmm. um Irene, what, first of all, tell us, political science psychologist, <laughs> <laughs> what uh, does that mean? Oh my God, uh, I, I did political science and psychology uh, as, as my undergraduate. Ah, okay. Yeah. University so, of Nairobi? Yes, yes, yes. Ah, okay. Yes. And, and how do the two marry? They really do, because, I mean, um, psychology is a study of human behavior, right? And now politics is about uh, allocation of resources. But in the allocating of resources, um, it's the people, the electorate, who are, what is this called, who are uh, at the center of it all. So it's important to understand their behavior and how they react to issues or not react to issues. Yes. Okay. Mm. So um, how, you, I mean, how did you come about the decision to run uh, for senator, Kiambu mm. Kauti? Mm. Hmm. Um, <laughs> So uh, 2022 was 10 years since I graduated. And uh, initially when I went to school, I, um, I cleared school in 2007. Oh my God, now I'm, I'm okay, well, my age is out there now. <laughs> so I cleared school in 2007. And when we cleared school, I was in Akuru. And we were among the first people to receive tracks of people coming from other sides because of post-election violence. And I remember in class, um, when we were revising the final touches of exams, I remember we were having a debating class on, um, as we were calling it then, Rao Naobako, you know. And um, I was not understanding why we would have a debate, an intellectual conversation in class. And now I'm here seeing guys coming in in lorries because at this, at this violence, why? Why do we even have to fight over people we don't know, over people who don't... You know, it, it was not making sense for me. And so for me, that's why I'm, I'm, that's how I decided to go do political science. And so it was 10 years, as I said. 
and in the 10 years, um, I really wanted to see what there is to this politics. You know, enough of the theory part. What is the practicals of it? What does it look like? What does it feel like to be a politician in this country, a young woman at it? And that's why I decided to take the Senate seat, because, I mean, yeah, why not? Why not? Okay, so mm. I know Wamatangi was exiting a senator. He, he had set his eyes on the, on the, the gubernatorial seat. seat. Yeah. Um, so how far did you get in this endeavor? Ha, ha, ha. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it ended at the tribunal, unfortunately, or uh, fortunately. Um, I really didn't get to the ballot, per se, uh, but I, I, I met the other side of the system. The, 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 the what is this called? Um, the structuring of the whole electoral process. So for me, it was also a win in so many ways. Yes. So you were running as an independent? I was running as an independent. So how, how did you end up then before Oh the my tribunal? God. The, the, uh -huh. hmm. So uh, like many other independent candidates, I was disputing the fact that um, my case was on the fact that uh, senators were supposed to return their papers on the 31st according to what had been gazetted. But when, when the chairperson announced the, what is this called? Uh, the incremental on the days that, uh, uh, what is it called, that uh, candidates are supposed to be returning their papers, uh, it so happened that um, our CRO, when talking to us then, he mentioned that we were supposed to be returning our papers on the 1st of June. So I did that. I, 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 I presented myself on the 1st of June, and to him he said he was only receiving women, uh, women rep papers. And what he told the tribunal, I remember he said, um, hmm, it's funny, he said, uh, the thing that I, I let on a babake and a mamake. And I was like, yeah, why not? And, um, and he was very, you can wait for other five years. And for me, I was like, why? So you didn't check my work. You were too arrogant to check my work uh, or to check my papers, per se. And now you're telling the court that I was, I was brought in by my mother and father, you know. It, 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 that, 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 that was a clear case of a CRO trying to demean, you know. And for me, during the, uh, the, 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 the court process, uh, I was very big on stop looking, looking at them as uh, father and mother per se, because it was, I had other groups of people, but look at them as Kiambu registered voters. Remember to... To buy as an independent candidate, you were supposed to bring in 2,000 uh, registered, Kiambu registered voters and in hard copies too. So for me, it was, I, I, I felt, I felt uh, from the whole process, in as much as I learned, I felt it was a spit on my face after collecting all those ideas and speaking to all those people. And then you, you, you fail to pass through. Yeah. Mm. Mm. So you feel cheated? <laughs> uh, well, it's our, it's our system. It's our system. It is our system. Mm -hmm. mm. Resigned then? Mm? You're resigned to the situation? Not necessarily. Not nec what do you do, Olive? What do you do at that point? What do you do? What do you do? What are you left with? Mm. So you just accept things as they are, but I mean, it's not the end of the road. It is the beginning of so many things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, I like your outlook. Mm. Uh, you remember earlier, even with the National Dialogue Committee report, you're like, I choose to be hopeful. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hopeful, can uh, I? I, I, like, I really mm. like the outlook. Mm. Mm. Uh, but Gabriela Lorere, uh, like Hippia North, you made it up to the ballot. Yeah. Uh -huh. Tell us, uh, did your agenda in any way uh, play a role? Because you come from a pastoralist community, and uh, the perception we have is it's a very patriarchal society yeah my gender played a big role mm, you know we vote our election system is according to negotiated democracy whereby elders negotiate uh, uh, among clans uh, like one clan is given governor another clan is given senator another one women rep that way they negotiate positions so being a woman from patriot community is very disadvantageous vying for any political fit. First, you are being told a woman cannot speak when men are speaking. Uh, uh, most cases, you see women 
they are speaking far away from men. Men are, are seated this side, women this side, and they cannot stand while speaking. You speak while sitting down. That's our cultural, our culture. Uh, being a woman from patrol community, part we being a, can you go? Mm. They call it going issue. Can you go and defend Ngombe? Now that we are fighting banditry and we need a leader who can come out like a bandit and go and defend <coughs> our house. Can you? <coughs> that is one disadvantage. The second one, you are not married. In our patrol community, even being uh, just a uh, in any committee, just a committee, and you are not married, that's another problem. And not just married, which clan are you married? If your clan is, um, you know there are clans with few people, and there are clans who are classified as blacksmith. They are called Kunono. Allow me to say Kunono. Uh, they are poor, they don't have cows, they don't have they are black meat. They just make panga, jembe, th those clans. If you are married to that clan, I'm sure you will not be voted in by anyone. Even even the adopted Samburus who are living, the adopted Samburus. When I say adopted Samburus, I say uh, I, I'm talking about other tribes like Kikuyu, Somalis. There are our Samburus, they are Samburus, but they are not Samburus in real life, but they are Samburus. They will not even vote you in. Mm. They have adapted that culture. So being a woman, you are not married, you are not, you are not from this big clan. Another thing, you are not, your age is 20, no one will vote you in. You are being told, hey, kaka, mpaka, mpaka ile siko, utakuwa mkubwa kidogo 40 years. Alors, for another thing, even the men, they are not the one who are discouraging you. Your fellow women. You know, going to university and then you come back and say you want to buy. Are you not? No. You know, another thing, if you are married to another, to another tribe. That's a big problem. Now, uh, for example, Naitula Lekluda is married to a Kalenji. That became a big issue in Samburu politics. We want to take our resources to Baringo County, to Kalenji. Even banditry, when it happened, we were to wow, we were Kalenji, we were. Because Pokot are Kalenji, then they associate Naitula Lekluda with banditry because we were to wow. You see, being a, being a woman in in patrol community, that's a big disadvantage. Another thing, you don't have money to campaign because in our cultural setup, you see a woman cannot, cannot own anything in our community. Even if you are working, but most cases, you see you write all your property under your husband. Really? Yes. In this day and that's why one week ago, we had community land summit in Samburu County. Uh, whereby we brought together all indigenous people in Eastern, uh, in East Africa, Karamojong in Uganda, Topos in Southern Sudan, Rwanda, Congo, Kenya. You th in Kenya, we brought 22 counties and Ethiopia about women land ownership. How are we, are, we, are we encouraging our women to own land? Because in our community, you cannot own land cannot, totally, you cannot own land as a woman. You see now, relating it with politics, how can you campaign, compete with men, and you yourself, you, you are, <coughs> you are not, mm. you know, you're working, but you don't have anything under your name. You know, it's it become very, very hard. And you see, in most cases, even if you are married, because we have spoken with many, our Somali, even if you are married, and you want to buy, you end up divorcing with your husband because he cannot support you, he cannot, he's the one even discouraging you not to buy, giving you an option. Either you stop all this drama or you divorce. Mm. That's right. being a woman from northern Kenya and you want to buy any political seat, it's become 
very hard. But uh, um, recently, like five years ago, there, there are women who came out clear. Like, you know, allow me to give examples because I didn't do it, but we have women who won. Okay. Like, so uh, we'll come back with that because uh, we do need to take a break. I'm looking at the clock. And also I'd like Valentine to also uh, share her experience. So there are women who won. I wouldn't forget where we were with your contribution. Mm. Uh, so we take a break, we come back. But also when we come back, uh, Sylvia, you know, sort of uh, we can share. The last time when you was here, she, we were having a conversation on mentorship. Women mentoring women. Um, you know, we can share advice on how uh, Wajiku can handle herself in a situation where her boundaries have been violated uh, she doesn't want to show uh, she's angry because she's like this could cost me votes how would you advise her um, to navigate a situation uh, such as that given your experience ladies you as well how do you handle a situation such as that we continue with this conversation on the other side of this break valentine at least one nation valentine to one sisi The AA journey started like a dream 104 years ago. With the right leadership, the right business model, the right standards and international affiliation with FIA, AA has grown to support you with various mobility products and services. And it's growing. Now, you need sunglasses because the future, yeah, the future of AA Kenya is too bright. AA Kenya, inspiring mobility. On my dark marks, I've tried everything from A to Z, even vitamin C, but hardly any results. Nivea Lumina 630 works from day one with visible results in just two weeks and 71% dark marks reduction in 12. Join the 1 million women already using the number one Lumina 630 from Nivea. finally released from pain. That moment when you start to get back to ordinary and ordinary feels amazing. Whatever pain you're going through, release starts here. At Stanbic Kenya, we believe in your financial potential and we are here to help you reach new heights. Enjoy an attractive interest rate of up to 14% per annum on your savings. Make the most of this exclusive offer today and let your money thrive. For more details, call us today or visit a branch near you. Stanbic Bank. On this show, we will focus on some of the ways in which agriculture can transform Africa's economies. One of the areas that uh, is critical in agriculture transformation is access to quality agricultural inputs. What I think we should do is to be able to get a population that is well fed, mm. that has good nutrition, and that you have good uh, food security. Then from there you will be able to have a population that thinks even outside the box. I am impressed by African Agricultural, uh, African Development Bank's vision uh, on four different elements. They talk about targeted investments in specific value chains and agroecological zones to make this happen. The Sport Essence is a light serum, quickly absorbed to clear dark marks. Rich moisturizing cream is a gel cream type that deeply hydrates and prevents dark marks. I highly recommend Melano CC for healthy and happy skin. Roto. All right, so we're back. Sorry, uh, during the break, uh, Wanjiko asked um, 
Sylvia, that you really did you not experience because you were saying the reception was good. And, and so she was saying she had, the only time she had difficulties where they were campaigning as a group. And even from the point of view of a journalist observing these events, and I see, because the podium is only so large and all these people want to get on and everybody wants to say something. So there's really quite a lot of pushing and shoving and everybody's trying to find their space, especially near the principal. You want to be seen near the principal. Yeah, so uh, <laughs> yeah. I'll give you a chance to, to speak to that. But first, uh, Valentine, uh, <laughs> what did your gender in any way play a role in your campaigns? Was it because uh, uh, Wanjiko said in some ways it worked for her, in other ways it didn't? Thank you, Olive. Um, I'd like to say that uh, violence, especially against women in politics, is rampant. And uh, we also realized that uh, this violence uh, really plays a major role in inhibiting uh, women's political participation. And uh, as we have been seeing, while the percentage of female voters and uh, women who are running for office has been increased uh, by the several political parties, still the women that get to office a few, and um, I read somewhere yesterday that 60% uh, of women do not participate in politics due to the fear of uh, violence. And uh, just like uh, Wanjiku said, uh, you realize that, uh, you know, participating in politics, especially if you're a woman, and for that matter, a young woman, is very hard because the society and uh, so many people are going to ask you, are you married? And uh, me, for example, uh, running for Kisumu County Woman Rep at uh, 22, well, I was uh, engaged. <laughs> I am now married. But then you could still see questions arising as to the matter of are you married because you know they would think that maybe I am still too young and uh, I might not be married and so there are so many forms of violence against women in politics it might not just be physical there is physical violence which includes assassination kidnapping you know uh, mainly so that they can force the candidates to resign there is also sexual violence uh, we have sexualized threats we see a lot of that online we have altered sexualized images against women just so that they can publicly question women's competency and shame them we also have um, psychological violence you know we see a lot of this online there are threats there are character assassinations stalking online abuse and uh, me, for example, I would say I experienced character assassination. You know, people would say several negative things about you that are actually not true. And uh, this would come even from fellow women. And just like my friend in the studio was saying, that sometimes you find that fellow women are actually agents of violence, you know. And um, we realize that... Um, violence against women in politics is a barrier especially when it comes to building human capital so me i would say i didn't experience any physical violence but i experienced psychological uh, violence and uh, sexualized threats you know such things and so it is a hard thing for women to be in politics and that is why uh, i'm happy that we are connecting it and discussing the two-third gender rule principle so that even though violence is making women not to venture into politics they can still be nominated they can still go to parliament they can still represent fellow women so i'm actually very glad that two-third gender rule is coming up to ensure the good representation of women and uh, this is going to help us, you know, in uh, ensuring representation. Okay. You know, when Gabriela was speaking, um, and, and she reminded me of Aisha Juma's story. I'm sure you've, you've had it. That her spouse was not in support mm -hmm. of, of her political ambitions. Uh, but, uh, Sylvia, you said your experience was positive in, in Westland's uh, constituency. But how would you advise Wajiko, given your experience, on how to handle inappropriate touching she does not want to look angry like an angry woman uh, but also she she i mean her boundaries have been violated yeah. i think that is where now uh, as women and i think I, I remember going to a training by um, oslo um, center and the training was very clear on uh, the amount the type of security you need to have as a woman 
um, being in uh, Westlands and being in the city of Nairobi, I think it was perhaps meeting uh, an, a voter that is more enlightened, that respects the boundaries of women, and also has the ability to, not the ability, but is able to listen. And in the case of Wanjiko, you know, you are in the, uh, uh, where it is the home country where the people were born. This is because Nairobi, people have shifted to come and, you know, work in Nairobi. But you're in Kiambu, you're in Kakamega, you're in, uh, you know, uh, West Pokot. It's a native home. And therefore, the reception is different. They look at you as a child who was born here, and this has been our practices. So in this case, I think what you need is um, to have enough security. But other than the security, you also need to look for the key leaders not the main leaders nationally, but the leaders in the community who can be on your side, such that if your security is working with you, they are protecting you and literally protecting you. Like anybody comes to you, they, they push them. That will not lose your votes because it's the security they are dealing with. And also you need perhaps an elder or two elders. Um, because I remember when we were starting to campaign, we started the campaign just going randomly, meeting people randomly. Then we sat back and said, how do we strategize this? And we now clustered the voter into the different age groups. And so the elders, well, we, I met them separately, uh, the women separately and the elder men separately. And the minute you meet the elder men of, the, of that community, you get a certain level of respect that now transcends to the youth and all the other uh, facet, I mean, groups of the people, of uh, the voters. So it was easier for me to handle it that way. And I think uh, once the elders listened to me, and that was including the churches and also that's just the leadership of the Westlands community, they listened to me and they saw that I had an agenda. So when they start talking positively about you to their households and to their relatives, then it becomes an easier uh, call that people want to listen to. So when they know that Sylvia is coming, the hall fills up. Of course, there's something, you know, an incentive of fair going into it, but they, they, they come with an expectation to listen. And much as I had security, I also just had the goodwill of people wanting to know who I am. And I think it was something different. Um, we had um, uh, Betty Tet, who tried to be uh, MP there for quite a long time, um, but she had a lot of challenges particularly what that uh, MP at the time was called Fred Gumo. They had a lot of challenges. She had violence. She was violated. She was beaten up most of the time. Um, her voters were beaten up. But in my case, I did not experience any of that. So I think it's the approach. But being in your own community, first of all, you need to look for the elders and make sure that the elders, one or two, are on your side. Once two elders are on your side, be sure out of those two, there's a hundred youth behind you. There's a hundred women behind you. So that, you know, we still have that hierarchical respect. Because we are still an African community, a society. So we still have to have that hierarchical respect for the community and the leadership of the community. Right. Yeah. Um, Wanjiko, and something you said, you said fair. Yes. I mean, I, I'm looking at somebody like uh, Wanjiko. Mm -hmm. Wanjiko Bado Anajijenga. She's mm -hmm. a young lady. Mm -hmm. um, I... I Probably not going to inherit your father's <laughs> land, I, you, given how the, the, the cultural setup. Uh, but when, like you guys, I mean, uh, at least Sylvia and, and Wajiko, I, I don't know whether Gabriela spoke to this. When people come to listen to you, they want how mkonom tupu haulambu. So I know yes. you guys are saying you're trying to sell solutions mm. uh, to these constituents, but mm. they have an expectation. Uh, okay, Allah, see, I've sat here for this period of time. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> uh, how, how do you navigate that challenge of, of funds uh, as a woman campaigning? Because uh, as Gabriela said, she said in her community you're worth nothing, essentially. Mm -hmm. uh, so how do you navigate uh, that challenge? So in, in politics, um, money speaks, that's sadly. The cost of, of, of campaigns in Kenya are so, so high. And for a woman, you also have to have money. And that's why it's so important uh, when we speak about Pesa Mfukoni, we also want money for women too. But so what you do is that you, you have to have saved, first of all, towards the campaign. And then number two is that you have to have, you, you do fundraisers from friends and willing, uh, well-wishers, you know, 
people who can contribute to the dream because what you're selling is the dream and i think my campaign was very was very powerful because i was selling a dream this is how i want to see it and i if i was actually telling people come fund my campaign so that we can do this together but of course i had huge rebuttal you know kwa groundwater nasema wewe unataka tukupe pesa na tukupe kura you know <laughs> you're taking so much from us so people want people want you to continuously give and to, so that you can get to the seat but you can't you can't compare my financial situation to a man for for example because a lot of women don't have and Gabriela has put it so well women don't have don't have access to resources and even if it's you the one who's creating the money it goes to your husband or to your father's account and so for me maybe if i want to to fundraise for 1 million i have to look for like 100 people but for a man to get 1 million he'll call like three of his buddies and they're able to bring up that money so you for a woman you work extra hard for when it comes to politics women have to work two three times to to be able to get uh, enough financing and then again we don't have access to like land that you can quickly sell and be able to fund fundraise your, uh, or fund your campaigns so what you also need is the goodwill of women rights organizations who are willing to come and support and they necessarily don't give you money but they're able to give you uh, merchandise maybe t-shirts or posters and so on and so forth and that's why we ask for us maybe when we're speaking towards to that gender role political landscape is not equal you know they tell us and then equal ground go and fight for it but the truth and the matter is qua ground we to need different it's not an equal landscape when a man goes on the podium and asks for votes, it's different for me. I will have, first of all, to defend why, I'm, why I did I even think of running. Then the, the man will come and just say, I'm running, that's my manifesto. For a woman to go on that podium, people ask, why did you think of becoming a leader, you know? So are you a leader at home? You don't, uh, you're not married or you're not leading your, if you're not leading your home, then how can you lead us, you see? So, and for men, dispersing money is a bit easier for them. For us, because it's also chaotic, and she will tell you because they have, dispersing money also is also chaotic as, uh, as well. So you have to really have strategies on how you're going to disperse money. And then sometimes when you're walking around during campaigns, people want quick money from your pocket. And sometimes you've, you're done. Mm -hmm. So I even showed another guy, I just have 30 bob on my impressor. I had 38 bob. And he said, send me that 30 shillings. Wow. <laughs> I had to say that 30 bob, you know, and it was with 8 shillings and I'm like, you know, am I going to continue the campaign? Tell, will I wake up tomorrow and continue? But you have to show up every day. You have to show up. And you know, the society often, li it lynches women, while men get seriously soft landings. But for women, you're constantly lynched. I was lynched so many times, but guess what? You recover. So I'm asking more women, <laughs> please. <laughs> Go back, please do not, uh, you, we have to show up because the campaign, the 2022 campaign elections, you had 16,000 total candidates uh, and only 1,692 were women. So if we, if we increase the number of women participating in politics, then we increase the chances of winning. So it is our, we have to continue and I'm here today to tell more women, we have to continuously run for office so that we can increase our, 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 our representation in parliament. And I'm happy with the work that multi-sector working group is doing and a lot of women, we showed up and we gave our submissions. And we want to see, for me, I want to see more young women in parliament. We have senior women in parliament. We now want to increase the number of young women in parliament and we also want to increase the women, number of women with disability in parliament. But not only let's not focus with women maybe in urban centers, Let's also look at women at the grassroots as well, mm. Mm. because they also bring in fresh new perspectives, lived realities, uh, lived different landscapes, because a woman, a young woman like me running for office is different from a woman running for office from pastoral communities, different from a woman running from uh, in Kilifi. You know, like there are about six counties, they never voted in a woman. None, like no MCN. Then it's just the only woman who's in leadership is just the women rep, and that's because it's an affirmative seat. Unless maybe we said this seat would have voted, men could run. I swear, 
where have women running for, for the woman representative seats too? So you see, the affirmative action doesn't come. You know, people say at the, it's just kupeleka to a mama bunge, but it's here to serve a purpose. It's honestly not equal in political landscape. Yeah. Okay. Um, <clears throat> you talked about the Woishi. And uh, so actually, you mentioned also women with disabilities. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I will have a conversation on that next week. Uh, Denita Gatti uh, did reach out and say, because you can imagine as a woman you're having it rough, now imagine you're dealing yes, with a disability. exactly. Yeah. Um, but on the question of Woishi, <laughs> uh, there's a forum, I don't know that we were all in attendance, there was the annual women's convention. Uh, good morning, Daisy, I'm Danny. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Of organizations that support women and their, politi and their political ambitions. Uh, and I, uh, I remember the Registrar of Political Parties was present. And they need to. And she said, Najua, sometimes you women, you don't. Hamjelewi, umnangoja last minute. Then. And then you come, you're clueless. You don't know <laughs> timelines. Yes. You don't know. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and you're telling me, <laughs> I know shit. Uh, but that's also true. You're telling me, you're saying, uh, I need a proposal. I need yeah. a you know? second. Uh, oh yeah, my yeah. God. And so she's like, I try as much as I can to mm. assist. But, yeah. And then she was like, uh, a man loses, he's already back on the ground, then he shakes it off the next morning, he's looking at the next Elections. election. Yes. Women, uh, oh, she said the women in the room, you're still contemplating, why do I want even to go back yes. to that exactly. uh, Maya. But uh, the what do you make of, of uh, those comments, Irene? Uh, sadistic, I would say, <laughs> because... Um, I mean... W w if you talk about uh, women not being, uh, like we've said, uh, the shade thrown by side, uh, <laughs> <laughs> not aware of the timelines, um, we had people like Muthiora, we, we saw cases of, and I think this is one thing that has not been discussed so well, um, the issue of independent candidates. I think it's something that was just, you know, uh, because we had cases like Muthiora ban his identity cards. In in, yeah. in in you remember yeah. yeah because I mean it was unfair treatment you know um, and most of the things that were being asked you, we, from independent candidates there were things that in the, some most independent leaders I won't okay well leaders were in court fighting it you know we were in court fighting the fact that we were asking you we asking leaders to bring identity copies of uh, identity cards of uh, the electorates it's it's it's, it's it's against the law on the rights on the grounds of privacy the right to privacy you know and so sometimes i i think I, we, we i don't think women are saying that we need the standards lowered for us no we are equally capable to 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 fight uh for for for, for our seats you mm -hmm. know our rightful positions and, and i'm curious uh -huh. why the decision to go it independent i would imagine it would be easier in a party, you know, the waves we hear about yeah. there was a yellow wave, there was an orange wave, depending <sighs> on where you come from. Once you have that ticket, you are assured of an election. Sour. Yes. But getting that ticket now, is where the story is. Yeah. Getting that ticket is always a headache. Getting that ticket is, I, yeah, it's, 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 oh my God, it's, 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 it's bizarre to say the least. Because at the end of the day, the people you fight against, the people you meet at the table, the people, you know, it's, it's, you really still have to have a godfather. To be very honest with our Kenyan politics, you have to have a godfather to get you there at the table. So that is how I decided to go in as an independent candidate and even to understand our systems. Remember my political science background. I really wanted to understand what is this that you keep talking about? Does it even make sense? Is it making sense? Are we are we are we are we are we, are we chanting in the right direction? Because when you look at cases, the, the cases um, in countries like Australia, the independent candidates candidacy got so many women into parliament. You know, because these are these are at alternative routes that have been put there for people who cannot afford or to take the, the route of political parties. Mm. Hmm. Um, yeah, you know, when you're speaking, I was remembering Kawira Mwangaza's uh, exactly. simulations mm. in, in Meru County, mm. and there were the disgusting remarks, because there's no other way to put it, mm -hmm. that were made. Mm. Uh, the sexualization, her sexualization, you know? Yeah. And, mm -hmm. and I remember, so, how, Gabriela, how do you handle that? Uh, when you go talking about your sexualized yeah, online. Yeah, actually, me a lot of chicas just watching it. Mm. Yeah. 
Uh, repeat your question. The sexualization mm. of women on the campaign trail. Uh, it, it comes down to your private parts. Mm. Uh, how do you yeah. navigate that? How did you navigate that in like Kipia North? Uh, I think the best thing is just being I don't care. Yeah. yeah, because they will pick and pick. Even they, I don't know, Photoshop, they yeah. bring your body with your neck. It, not your body, but your, your head is there. I think the best thing is just being uh, don't care and kila mtu akona mwili yake allow me to do anything with my body it's none of your business but sometimes i think there is a narrative in Tamboro county uh, 2017 election whereby uh, i can't mention the pattern he said if a woman if it me it ava marinda all women came together and voted in a woman, that woman, because of that Marinda thing. Even, I think, just being a woman, you are just being, uh, your sexual part comes out openly than being a man. Being a woman, you defend so many things, even your past relationship, and they can't even... <laughs> They can't even, you know, a man can have 10 relationships and it's normal to them. But a woman, even if you are from one relationship to another, that becomes a big deal in many, many people. Mm. I think just being a woman, you need to, to have hard skin. Okay. Yeah, um, and accept anything that comes on your way. Because uh, when you start thinking about Jana or the same Ivy, Tomorrow you will not move forward. Mm. Because many things will be said. Lies and truth, yote itasemekana. Mm. Just you being don't care. Wakilete nye wanalete udasema sawa. Kwani koni. Okay. Um, Valentine, uh, the other day, you know Beth Mugo wrote a book. Uh, and the other day we have a segment on, that runs on Saturdays during the 9pm news called Women in Power. So Rose Wangwe who... Uh, curates the segment, produces the segment, uh, sat down with Beth Mugo. And Beth Mugo was saying, um, women, these women now are segregated along party lines. And she was saying in her generation, a woman was your tribe. Um, I'm curious, Valentine Otieno, did you have a woman who was already in politics who held your hand and said, it's okay, we can do this, you can do this? Um, thank you very much, Olive. Yes, 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 I did. I had uh, women like um, the MP for Suba North. Uh, you know, she really encouraged me and uh, supported me. She even supported me financially. And uh, considering the fact that uh, during my time, I was jobless. <laughs> I just came out fresh from campus and uh, I wanted to, you know, uh, throw my heart in the ring in the field of politics, just as I had been a leader in the University of Nairobi. So when I came into politics, of course, um, just as we are talking about right now, there had there were sexual threats, you know, especially, you know, if men are attacking you, they would attack you. They would say things like, uh, you're talking like that because you're having your periods. Are you on your periods? You know, very, very many, many. Um, yes, I had women on my side. Uh, Millie Mabona supported me financially, she encouraged me, and she told me, you know, even though the person that you are vying against is my friend, you are a young woman, and you have inspired several of other people, so I am going to support you. And I had also um, several other women from uh, CSOs, you know, civil society organizations uh, really support women, and they've been great champions when it comes to gender-based violence and so I had women like betty okero she supported me one time when i had a debate she came in through for me and you know she just provided me with what i would call mentorship so violence against women is there but um, this isn't just a matter of opinion it is a fundamental aspect of creating a safer and fairer world to the you know of work to everybody and just like um wanjiko has said in politics, when you come and you do not have money, it is three times as hard for you, and especially as a woman and as a young woman, uh, because you find out that me, for example, you know, I got 81,000 votes in the elections, 
And this was after several threats of me to step down. There were several threats that I should have stepped down. And, uh, and uh, this was also after not having any agent in any polling station. So I didn't have anybody to protect my votes or whatsoever. And this is a challenge that several other women are experiencing because money is a problem in politics, especially when it comes to men, women, because men have the most financial muscles so you find that the violence that is happening against women they have far-reaching negative implications on survivors their families and societies as a whole uh, but the good news is that the violence is preventable and uh, the evidence shows that you know the changing changing of the social norms is key if people stopped asking us are you married who is your husband uh, why are you you are still young you do not have experience then we would have more women uh, represented in uh, in politics so preventing gender-based violence requires holistic multisectoral approaches that uh, you know that will address violence and change social norms attitudes at all levels of society uh, and that is part of what we are, we are seeking to do uh, this morning. So the women here in studio say the playing field is not level, but regardless, to the Gyoko, uh, mm -hmm. uh, your last words in, in 30 seconds on this subject, Sylvia. Um, yeah, just as uh, my fe the fellow panelists have said, uh, as women, we need to come out and uh, go for these seats. Uh, yes, there is the... Um, a recommendation by the uh, NADCO report that they um, include, I mean, increase the number of women in parliament. But we don't want just that to be incentivized. However, it will provide a platform uh, for us to debate in parliament as women uh, for our own rights and also to increase our presence uh, in, the, in the national uh, outlook of leadership in the, in the country. Because one of the things that is failing us is perhaps the fact that there's very few women who are actively fighting for our rights. The rest of us are fighting on TV or media platforms, but those who are actually fighting in parliament to make sure that they pass bills that are pro-women, uh, bills that will support women, um, are very few. And we can't blame them at the moment. So we just need that number increased, either through uh, elective process or through the uh, affirmative action, which might take place when they, this report is uh, authorized. So I do want to encourage women, especially the young women, step forward. Whether you have finances or not, step forward. Look for the community people, the community leaders that can support you and start your journey. Even if you fell four times in the election process, one day you'll be a winner. All right, where'd you go? So I would like to thank the support of, uh, of women who supported me during campaigns. Uh, I want to thank Daisy Amdani, I want to thank Susan Otieno. These are amazing, amazing women who really supported us. And uh, above all, also the Kiambu Youth Council for helping me also gain up votes for, for young people in my community. But above all, I want Kenyans to buy in into the to the agenda um, role. We have we have to really fulfil this. It only takes 53 Kenya shillings per year per individual for us to actualise the to the agenda principle. If you look at corruption, it's 14,000 Kenya shillings per year. So. To the gender rule is something progressive and and when we have more women on board better decisions are made gender responsive budget budgets are done and above all we want to see um women not have to go through the nomination process like what uh, we, we say no nominate getting the party ticket is where it's at and if a woman because parties conduct polls on like uh, on, on the ground and they know women who are who have the ground if uh, you've seen a woman is excelling on ground, don't put her through the nomination process. Award her the certificate. That is one of the ways we can also uh, um, encourage or have more women in assembly. So okay. we have to see party leaders being very intentional. I wish my party leader was intentional with me. <laughs> I want we am um, asking party leaders to be really intentional about women leadership, and and I'm inviting any financier wants to finance 2027 <laughs> campaign. <laughs> I'm so open right. because money is where it's at. Okay. Yes. Um, Irene, I I think uh, it's 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 important that we even the space just to accommodate women, because for us to realize the fruits of democracy, women need to be part of the table. And for me, I would love to speak to the president, because at the end of the day, look at Charlene Ruto, the daughter. She has 
have she's had to force herself into the system you know and as a, as, as a father of a daughter please ensure that young women are, are seen in your government because that's the first point where women like Wanjiko Dega, Nyambura will be able to find some funding to campaign for the next election. I think it's important that we, we, we include women into the governance spaces for us to be able to move forward. Okay. And more so on the independent candidates. Okay. I think it's important because it's, it's, it's in our constitution. We, the, when it comes to elections, I think the space needs to be even for everyone to participate because it's, it's, it's the democratic right of every citizen of this country to participate in elections, okay. to be voted for and to vote. All right. So, yeah. um, Gabriela and, and uh, Gabriela and Valentine, please, Nomba Mutanisa Mehea Leo. Um, I, I have to close because I saw Nina Shaban. I'm really sorry, Gabriela. I'm really sorry. <laughs> Valentine, I'm really sorry. But I always have you guys on. Uh, one second. Uh, next time. Uh, one second. Allow me to thank my party leader, his name is Ukuri Yatani for giving me this opportunity. After being defeated at the ballot, he gave me at least to be the National Youth Leader Upia Party okay. and actualize what I wanted to do in the North. Thank All you. Right. Thank you very much. That's it uh, for AM Live. Uh, Nina Shaban, you go hapa mahali. Nina, you can share your box of tissue. Uh, <laughs> grappling with a cold, but we've had in studio. Uh, uh, Sylvia uh, Mulama, and she contested, uh, she's a women and youth advocate, and she contested the Westlands uh, parliamentary seat uh, on an ANC ticket. We have Wajiko Tiga, who contested for set award in Kiambu County. Irene Nyambura. Irene uh, is a, such a good sport. Thank you. Uh, she is a political enthusiast. We'll get into that next time. Uh, Gabriela Lorere, Upia Party Head, uh, National Youth Leader, as as well as CEO Indigenous um, Wellbeing Initiative for All, and uh, we've had Valentine Otieno, a UDA leader, joining us all the way from Kisum County. That's it. My name is Olive Barrios. Enjoy your morning.